Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we are diving into the world of blockchains and exploring a very fundamental concept called as consensus mechanism. This is the magic behind how blockchains achieve agreement and avoid chaos. So buckle up for the next 12 to 15 minute journey where we will break down the basics, explore different types and understand their pros and cons. So let's first of all understand what is consensus and why it is needed. Imagine a group of friends trying to decide on a movie to watch. Some want action while others prefer comedy. Without agreement, there is no movie night. Similarly, blockchain faces a similar challenge, reaching agreement on the state of the network. Meaning, who wants what and what transactions are valid. This is where consensus mechanisms come in. They act as a central decision-making process for the blockchains, ensuring accuracy where all participants agree on the current state of the ledger, security which prevents fraudulent transactions from being added, decentralization where no single entity controls the decision-making process. The blockchain world offers a variety of consensus mechanisms each with its own unique approach. Here is the first and the most popular consensus mechanism of all. It's called the proof of work, the OG of consensus mechanisms used by Bitcoin. Imagine a big competition where anyone can join using their computers. The goal is to solve a super difficult puzzle like a complex maths problem. Miners compete to solve these complex puzzles. The first one to solve it wins the right to add a new page or block to a special ledger called blockchain that records everyone's transactions. As a reward, the winner or the miner gets some digital money or cryptocurrency and some transaction fees. This competition is called proof of work. It's like a security system for the blockchain. By making it difficult to solve the puzzle, it ensures security, which is almost impossible for someone to tamper with the records, because changing something in the past would require solving all the puzzles, again, which is too expensive and time-consuming. And decentralization, where anyone with a computer can participate, preventing any single person or group from controlling the system. However, Proof of work is energy intensive due to the computational power that's needed for mining and has scalability limitations leading to slow transaction speeds and higher fee. Next on today's video, we are going to see proof of stake. This energy efficient alternative uses validators who stake their cryptocurrency to secure the network. The more tokens staked, the higher the chances of validating the next block. Imagine a lottery, but instead of buying tickets with money, you use your cryptocurrency as tickets. The more coins you stake, like putting them in a secure vault, the more entries you get in the lottery. Here is how proof of stake works. When someone sends cryptocurrency, the transaction needs to be added to the blockchain. The network randomly chooses validators from a pool of people who stake their coins. The chance of being chosen is higher for those who stake more. The chosen validator verifies the transaction and adds them to the new block. The validator who created the block gets rewarded with a new cryptocurrency. Here are some benefits of proof of stake. Proof of stake doesn't require solving complex puzzles like proof of work, hence reducing energy need to run the blockchain. Though proof of stake requires less processing power, which leads to faster transaction times. Remember, proof of stake is still relatively new compared to proof of work. There is a chance that people with large amount of staked coins could have more influence on the network. Think of it like a more efficient way to secure a shared document or the blockchain without needing everyone to fight over it. Like in proof of work. It's like a lottery where everyone who participates contributes to the security and gets a chance to win rewards. Next consensus model is 
delegated proof of stake. Let's try to understand this model with a very simple approach. Imagine you live in a large building with many residents. You need to decide on something important like upgrading the elevator or something else. But instead of everyone voting directly, you elect a smaller group of trusted individuals or delegates to make the decision on their behalf. Delegated proof of stakes or DPoS works in the same way in the world of cryptocurrency. Let's see how it works exactly. Token holders or people who hold the cryptocurrency can vote to choose a limited number of delegates to be responsible for validating transactions. These selected delegates take turns validating transactions and adding them to the new blocks in the blockchain. Delegates who successfully create blocks receive rewards for their work. Here are some benefits of delegated proof of stake. Faster and more efficient because it has fewer validators. Makes the process faster and more scalable than proof of work or proof of stake. Also, delegated proof of stake doesn't require complex computations like proof of work, making it more energy friendly. And here are some things to consider. It's less decentralized, since power is concentrated among a smaller group of delegates, making less decentralized compared to proof of work and proof of stake. Delegated proof of stake has a potential for collusion. If a few delegates work together unfairly, it could harm the network. Think of it like a simplified voting system where everyone can still participate by voting for delegates. But the actual decision making is done by a smaller trusted group. Delegated proof of stakes aims for a balance between speed, efficiency and security in the blockchain world. Next on the line is proof of capacity where miners utilize pre-allocated storage space like a computer hard drive to solve puzzles. Let's take a look at how POC or proof of capacity works. Imagine you are playing a game where you need to prove you have a lot of storage space on your computer, like a big digital closet. Instead of filling it with clothes, you fill it with unique codes. The more space you feel, the better you your chances of winning the game. Miners first create special files called plots by filling their hard drives with unique codes. This takes time and resources but only needs to be done once. Then the network announces a challenge like a specific combination of codes that needs to be found. Then the miners quickly search their plots for the matching code, the more space they fill with unique codes, the bigger their closet, the faster they are likely to find the answer. However, it's the first miner to find the matching code wins the right to validate a block of transaction and earn rewards. Proof of capacity has certain benefits, like it doesn't require complex calculations like proof of work, making it eco-friendly. Anyone with spare storage space can participate, promoting decentralization, making it more accessible. However, the downside of proof of capacity is its slow operational process, then proof of stake or delegated proof of stake, and often can be resource intensive, requiring significant storage space for miners. Think of it like a resourcefulness competition. Instead of using computing power like proof of work, miners compete by utilizing their storage space for a chance to win rewards and contribute to the network's security. Moving on to the last consensus model on this video, proof of burn or POB. Imagine you are entering a draw, but instead of buying tickets with money, you burn some of your existing tokens. Burning means permanently removing them from circulation, essentially taking them out of the game. The more tokens you burn, the more entries you get in the event. During the transaction phase, people submit transactions to be added to the blockchain, post which validation happens. And to participate in validating these transactions and potentially earn rewards, users choose to burn a certain amount of their cryptocurrency tokens. Then the validators are selected. The network randomly chooses validators from a pool of users who burned their tokens. 
Those who bond more tokens have a higher chance of being chosen as validators. The chosen validators verifies the transactions and adds them to the new block on the blockchain, post which validators who created the block receives a reward, often in the form of newly created tokens. Proof of bond has some cool benefits like bonding tokens takes them out of the circulation, potentially increasing the value of the remaining tokens over time. Bonding tokens to participate incentivizes good behavior as malicious actors risk losing their stake if caught. Consensus mechanisms are the lifeblood of blockchains, ensuring trust and accuracy without a central authority. Understanding these mechanisms empowers you to make informed decisions when exploring the worst world of blockchain technology. Remember, each mechanism has its own strengths and weaknesses, and the choice of which one to use depends on the specific needs of a blockchain project. That's all for today, folks. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like and subscribe for more blockchain related contents. Let us know in the comments which consensus mechanism you found most interesting and why. Until next time, happy learning, happy trading.